This video contains subject matter that may be offensive and disturbing to some people. If you are the type to require a warning throughout a video or show, let this message serve as your warning. This channel discusses the harsh reality of true crime. If this warning is not sufficient for you, consider a different genre and unsubscribe from my channel immediately. I blew on to come jump up here, but I don't want to get the the hairs all over. <laughs> you won't go from underneath my uh, chair. How's everybody doing? Wireless gaming keyboard, wireless gaming keyboard, Windows, mix. Yeah, I've got an automation running over here, so. Oops. <clears throat> Alright, well, I hope that worked. Yeah, the the one case I'm covering, I was uh, Dolores De La Pena, a Pena, but I covered her. I did cover her in 2020, but I only it looks like I only had like four PDFs and whatnot. I have a lot more information this time. I think it was just one of those nights where it was like uh, five cases kind of thing. So we'll have to go over that again. <laughs> it's so weird. I have so many cases on here. Yep, yep. Well, yeah, there was there was something I was going to show you guys. Uh, I was thinking, you know, in the Naomi case, <clears throat> and I was kind of just thinking about it. To me, it seems sort of like it would be pretty reckless to leave your pickup truck sitting out right on the road there where an officer might actually pull over and check your plates because it's just an, like a uh, almost like an abandoned vehicle parked in the dirt. So I was kind of thinking, didn't it, wouldn't it make more sense, and we're talking about Naomi, the you know, missing case of Naomi Irion. And so it makes more sense to me that when the suspect got there early in the morning that he went over to this Lowe's parking lot and parked, you know, maybe way over here, way on the edge of the, you know, like right there or something, you know. And then it's just this quick little walk over here. And then he um, abducts. Naomi in her vehicle and 
disappears for however amount of time it is. Then he drives back and puts her car right here. And now you're disassociating. You know, it's making it more confusing. So you put her, her vehicle right here. Then he walks like hell. He could have just walked right around like this and went back to his vehicle. And then he comes out and then he drives by there. And here, here's what I think is possible. This is just, um, you know, it's just a possibility. You know, I still, you know, the other idea that I have is that he parked over here and whatnot and they were able to see him. <clears throat> but here, here's probably what happened. I heard on the scanner radio that they were looking, they wanted a bunch of officers to show up right over here and look around for evidence in this area over here. And I think they even mentioned like Lowe's parking lot or whatever. But what they probably did was they saw this guy walking over here, but they knew that he came from somewhere. So in the investigation, they went and searched the Lowe's cameras and they see a truck being parked at a time that makes sense. Like four, let's say 4.50 in the morning, a truck pulls into the Lowe's parking lot way in the back over here. And then you see a person get out with a gray hoodie on. Then that person walks over like this. And so now they're putting it together. This is just what I'm guessing at here. And then later in the day, the way they are able to link them is they see Naomi's vehicle being parked here. And then they go back over to the, they look again at the cameras at Lowe's. And five minutes later, that very same pickup truck that was parked there you see the individual, uh, somebody get into the same pickup truck, whether they're wearing the same clothing or not is irrelevant at that point because you already saw him wearing a certain set of clothing as they left the vehicle going this way. And then it drives by right here and that's their first really good shot of it because if it was way back over here on the edge of the parking lot, it would be very distant and not a very good uh, image. Over here, um, it's still pretty far, but it's not quite as many lots over and you got a camera right there. This one here, you know, it's hard to tell what the difference is. I mean, how many spots was that? Four, I don't know. I think it's a little bit further and maybe there wasn't a camera. Maybe he picked a side that didn't have a camera. So anyways, that's just something I was, I posted about today that, and also Lowe's is, has tons and tons of pickup trucks. His car wouldn't stand out. Here's truck, I mean, it would just be there uh, all day. Nobody would think twice about it. It's a, another pickup truck at Lowe's. I mean, look in here. Look at this. I mean, they're all over the place. One, two, you know, three, four. It's just right in that one little shot. Five, six. I mean, there's tons and tons of pickup truck. So his vehicle wouldn't have stood out if it was there. And he probably thought, even if he is picked up on a camera here, how are you going to associate anything? You know, other than the time. I mean, you got a time of somebody coming out of a pickup truck, It's but it's a distance. Uh, but it was later on when this car was dumped here, you know, parked there, and then just moments later, somebody gets in that vehicle, drives out, and then that same vic vehicle drives right by right there. Anyways, not saying that is what uh, happened, but it kind of makes more sense in terms of what he might have planned to do, but it also could have just been ill-prepared and he was just kind of winging it at the time and, you know, he parked over here, then he drove back there, got into his car, and that's where the witness, maybe somebody saw the truck there and then they maybe even saw somebody get out of the truck, get into this, or into the vehicle, get into the truck, drive off in this direction. And thank you, Teresa Ann up there. I don't know. She was she might have seen him, but she was kind of fiddling around with her phone apparently. Yeah, I'm, I'm not even saying. All I'm try, trying to do is figure out, I mean, whether it's here or here doesn't really make a whole lot of difference. I'm just 
throwing out another, an alternate place where he could have parked originally because it makes it a much shorter walk to Walmart. And you can also walk behind over here. You know, so even when he left, he could actually drive like this. And there's a, uh, I don't know if this gate's always open right here. But it's open right there, and he could have just driven around the back of that with his own, uh, with, well, let's see. After he left, after he dropped off her car over here at uh, Sherwin-Williams, he could have came over here and went, like, around and around like this to avoid cameras, maybe, and then out like that. You don't know, but uh, just throwing it out there. makes it a shorter walk and that's not even a long walk so it, it makes it it's right in between so it's like a quarter mile from here to here and then this is much shorter very quick walk then he takes her car hours later he comes back he's over there hey wow thank you Teresa eh. all right got you in the uh, for the uh, mug or whatever we win, it's either the tumbler or a mug at the end. Thank you. Wonder if it'll make a sound effect. <coughs> Should. Oh. <laughs> it was so big too. <laughs> thank you very generous thank you very much All right so does anybody have any extra thoughts anything new come out today I mean maybe it's simpler than what I'm saying how they linked it but that would be a pretty simple link. Uh, you go over and check the surveillance at Lowe's uh, the same day. You know, give me uh, March 15th at, uh, started at about four in the morning. You go through it and you see this truck pull out and a guy get out of the truck and walk this direction. Well, there you've already got, but it's not a very clear shot of the vehicle. So then they say, well, let's check some other cameras. They check a camera over here and the vehicle uh, does go by right there just moments after they see later in the day so they go oh so here's what they did they probably took the video and fast forwarded it through it just keeping their eye on where that truck was parked in the Lowe's parking lot just fast forward and then as soon as it disappears they stop it rewind a little bit and then play that out then you can see a a person it's very quick easy you know it's very you can do it really fast when you have a a known vehicle in the parking lot you just fast forward through it as soon as it disappears you stop you rewind until you get where the car is back in the image go back another two or three minutes then you see a guy show up in the car drives away and maybe even another camera in the parking lot they were able to see what direction he headed out then they went and checked over here at Sherwin Williams and uh, it, you know <laughs> I mean, it's just weird because if they if once he dropped her car off here you'd actually see the direction he was walking towards his car did he come in from like this or like this if he came in from like this it would be confusing but if he parked it here and went back he'd be walking back to it that's if his car was here I mean he could have parked it anywhere I'm just guessing in this far back corner because it's closest to here a little bit sort of hidden away from the road yeah. Well, I appreciate it, uh, Teresa. Yeah. Yeah, we might go do go over this on so mean, since most of the people over there just watch Summer Wells. Maybe they'll get like a, a little something different, you know. Yeah, nothing new. Man, it seems like they would be able to track that guy down really quickly, though, doesn't it? In the truck. 
I mean, whoever owns that truck, you'd think that they would come right up on that quick. But it doesn't seem to be happening. I mean, they should really put out a bunch of bulletins uh, everywhere and make sure that people know that uh, the, you know, that, that actually do custom work on those vehicles, any of the shops out there. Yeah, it's just really strange. <clears throat> yeah, that, well, that's what they told the brother that the truck is, they believe, is absolutely the suspect vehicle. That somebody, the guy that drives that truck is the same person. So they've linked it, and I'm just thinking that maybe they linked it through Lowe's here not a camera that just happened to be filming way over off to the side over here. Um, it's all based on timing then with the Lowe's camera. So just to you know, rehash that one, la <laughs> one last time, then I'll do my, uh, the other uh, case is that, um, you know, you just l picture it, you know, whatever the reason this guy, like an obsessed person, uh, we don't know what the reason is behind it, but in on the morning of the 12th of March, he drives over here, maybe in this Lowe's parking lot in the back corner over here. He gets out of his vehicle. This is like 4.50 in the morning, 5, five whatever, because he knows that she gets there around 5.05, 5, 5 5.10, and sits in her car and waits for the shuttle. So he gets out of his car, and he gets over there right around the same time, he sees her parked in this spot right here. You know, he walks back and forth and then eventually he kind of does some looping. And then he came in from behind her vehicle. And then he goes over to the driver's side and forces her off to the side because it's a uh, bench seating. You know, there isn't like the middle uh, portion. <laughs> you know, where like the, I'm not sure what you even call it, you know, where you keep your put your drink or whatever. Um, so <clears throat> he has her slide over and then the car disappears, right? Now it seems like when the car disappeared, there was, they, they searched all around in here because I believe her phone during, during the time between, and we don't know what the time frame is, but you know, it could be as much as 10 hours. The phone pinged over here and probably in other locations and they're really focused in out here for some reason. Yeah, I was gonna call it a console but it didn't sound right in my head. Yeah, so anyways, uh, <clears throat> you know, so it pings out here. So that means the car after going from uh, Walmart actually headed out this direction. And then what we do know is about 10 hours later, his pickup truck, truck is driving by right here. Well, how would you make the connection? Well, it could have been that um, after driving back, well, well, that's not actually, 10 hours later, uh, yeah, his car is driving by here, but also apparently, uh, even though there's, we don't know exactly <laughs> you know, when her car was put there, I just think it's also was there on the 12th because um, they found her vehicle on the 15th. So her vehicle on the 15th was parked there, and then after going through surveillance, they find his truck there. Now, did he drive her car back and put it here 10 hours later, and his truck was just parked over here? He got in that, and he drove by. That would be one way to connect them. The other way to connect them would be on that very morning, after they saw what direction he came walking in from, they wanted to check Lowe's cameras. Then at 4.50 or so in the morning, they see this large pickup truck pull in and a man get out wearing similar clothing, but the camera's from far away, so they're not using that for people to identify. Then the person 
um, the same, you know, obviously wearing the same clothes shows up over here. Then 10 hours later, uh, they're searching, they're looking, uh, after doing their research over at Lowe's and seeing where that truck parked, they just fast forward it through. They see when somebody got back in that car, then they went over here and tracked that vehicle driving by right here. And they also knew at that point that they had found um, Naomi's car right here on the 15th as well. So that means they probably put it together that he pulled up in her car, parked it, got out, walked back to Lowe's, got into his truck, came out and drove that way. That's eighth, That's my other theory. All right, so there you go. And other than that, I don't have a clue. I don't, I don't believe there's any, you know, international, uh, you know, conspiracy theory based on her d dad working for the government or something. Yeah. What information on the helicopter? Now we were just watching it. Um, I did find them referencing, uh, I think I do have that, hold on. Yeah, like I found, I was listening to this one. We can listen to this, it's nine minutes. Rescue 63, This represents like two hours. 219, William. I'll be traffic, California trailer plate. 219, William. 95A mile marker 31 with California 4 Robert Mary 5775. I forgot where it was, so we had to listen to the whole thing. 61 Medical Emergency 645 Sir Lace Boulevard, apartment 104, site page 1330. Why medical one's on scene? Medic one on scene 1331. 292 William. 292 William. 292 William. Probably 1080 warning for impeding traffic back in Ron's apartment. 292 William, 10 4. Line rescue 61 shows around. Rescue 61. Rescue 61 and route at 1332 to 645 Silver Lace Boulevard. Unit number 104, 65 year old male needs lifting assistance. He does weigh 330 pounds. 645 Silver Lace. Got it. Rescue 62, medical emergency, 126 Nevada Pacific, Banner Health, time piece 1334. Line rescue 61, same. Rescue 61 on scene 1334. Lion Rescue 137, Pine District available. Rescue 137, 1334. Firefly from William, show me out of 36, Georgie. Rescue 62 at 1335, 1260 Nevada Pacific Boulevard, Banner Health Clinic, 66 year old, with high blood pressure, conscious and breathing. Mm. 1260 Nevada Pacific Boulevard. It's only nine minutes Banner long. Health. I can't remember. Rescue 62 on scene. Rescue 62 at 1340. Medic 1, code 4. Medic 1, code 4. <laughs> Medic 1, code 4. Chloe's going nuts over there on the dry dock. 330, John, 23. Medic 1, transporting 1 to South Lion, starting mileage 0.0. .0. Medic 1, 10 4 at 1348. 473 North. Well, TT Zero Tracy's always hang on with, with the other ID units. With the uh, uh, deep in the uh, conspiracy channel. Line rescue 61. Sounds like about 5:30. TT Zero Tracy. On board pickup with Texas plates. Ten eight. Rescue 61. Ten four. Four seventy two. I had twenty eight Texas. Now this is this is something different. This is the one I made for my Henry call. Yellow Henry one two nine three. If you can attach that to this call, it also gives to me over there. Six oh five was a different one. That's where it mentioned. Four seventy two Henry Yellow. 
Like last night, I found where on the um, the scanner radio where Sher Sherwin Williams was mentioned, but that's it. Line rescue sixty one. Rescue sixty one. On Ford pickup with Texas plates. Ten eight. Rescue sixty one ten four. Four seventy two Ida twenty eight Texas. Four seventy two Ida. Henry Yellow Henry one two nine three. If you can attach that to this call, it also gives to me over the air. Four seventy two Ida Henry Yellow Henry one two nine three expires November of nineteen. Yeah. Any Ford passenger truck. Shows the previous owner of Jerry Cargill Richardson. What does that even mean? This is Yeah. Right, Man. Follow up with the eye units. Show me how that lows build myself. See there. See show up. Uh, there lows. He just mentioned lows right there. Right, sixteen. Twenty five. Twenty five. Nine. 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 Twenty uh, he's on the east side of uh, the Walmart parking lot. If you okay, the east side of the Walmart parking lot. So right now they're actually actively searching of what happened to her. This is on the fifteenth. This um, the scanner audio. Yeah. So they're over here looking in this area. On you know, the east side, they actually told people to meet right here, and they're looking for evidence. And that's kind of interesting that they want to meet here because that would kind of, you know, if you walk from behind like that. Want to come with me, we'll contact them. Copy. Four seventy two, I have five seventy nine, and I'll be out with that vehicle at the east side of the Walmart parking lot. Four seventy two, I have some for. Line or six two. Four two six two two. Rescue 62 transporting one, St. Mary, starting mileage 0.0. Rescue 62 at 1350. Lion, medic one, arrive south, Lion, ending mileage 5.6. a lot of crap going on in that little town. Ending mileage 5.6 at 1358. 255, yeah, that's route to Silver Springs for me. So are none of you guys playing in the, uh, the spin at the end of the show? <laughs> Other than uh, Lincoln Tom four two Teresa six six, yeah. six. five thirty five King Lincoln Tom four two six 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 suspended not valid expires five nineteen twenty two on a twenty eleven Ford Ford or sedan last of Townsend versus Taylor at three hundred nine South J Apartment C. Copy, thank you. Five sixty two King. Oh wow, I'm kind of glad you're feeling better. But that's what five, the vaccines five, are for. Negative. I was trying to get a hold of 562 King. 562 King. For an evidence search. There we go. That's the one. In East Newland, confirming for an evidence search. See you again. Thank you, Tamara. Attention all search and rescue. Stage at Stanley and East Newland confirming for an evidence search. Evidence search. Stage at Stanley right and East Newland. Right there. For an evidence search. That's got to be related. First time you tried to clear from Walmart, but I got it this week. See, Walmart. First time you tried it before. First time you tried to change my 20 to Lowe's. Kubata? First time you tried to change my 20 to Lowe's. I'll be Kubata if you want me to. 331, David, 23. 31 Well, that's what they're searching. They're searching Walmart. That's why they want people to meet there. Five seventy nine, Frank. I'll be clear. Walmart back out of the scene. They even said the East Walmart parking lot right here. I mean, that's exactly what they were doing. Five seventy nine, Frank. I'll be clear. Walmart back out of the scene. See, be clear. Walmart back out of the scene. Five seventy nine, Frank. And we mentioned Lowe's too earlier. Five seventy nine, Frank. Lion, medic one, clear and available. 
medic one clear and available at 1410. 497 frame. Can you show me how to Silver Laser Elementary School for a meeting? Right. We'll have another two minutes left. 321 David Traffic. 321 David. Dayton Valley Road at Granite with Nevada 754 William Tom John. 321 David, that's right. You know, why don't they just teach people to talk like, yes, 395, hey, whatever, you know, like a normal sentence, you know, like, so just like, uh, I mean, it almost sounds a little bit like this you know, guy. That's just one thing down, 15, all the better dung bear on 15, I better dung bear on 15, 20, I better dung bear on 15, better dung bear on. Yeah, I can't make out what he's saying either, other than 15 every once in a while. Rescue 37, medical emergency, 1290 East Antelope Street, Silver Springs, time page 1420. Rescue 137 copies. Rescue 137 copies at 1420. Respond to 1290 East Antelope Street, 35 year old female having vision issues. She's conscious and breathing, devising double vision and pain in the right eye. 1290 East Antelope. 321 David, 10 8, no need for 28. 321 David, 10 point. 321 David, 10 point. Fine, Rescue 137 responding. Rescue 137 responding, 1421. 2610. 2610. Maybe transporting one J3. Yeah, I think we heard the part where they were, at least they were searching, and then earlier uh, there was an, another instance where they mentioned. One a female officer says she's at Sherwin Williams. That's probably when they found the vehicle. You know, it was between 11:30 and like 12:45. The audio we were listening to. So there it was. Yeah, they, he's not Robert. Okay. <clears throat> and when you say they, yes, the psycho uh, crazy people out there. <clears throat> now, if it turns out he's wearing a prosthetic leg. Well, there's the one in a million, okay? But uh, that's never the truth. The, the, the reality is people want it to be like the movies. So, hey, thanks, Sarcastic Siren. Yeah, her phone, apparently, when they, they were searching up in this area, right here. Why would they search there unless, uh, you know, it's like ping or maybe there's some surveillance footage? I mean, who knows, right? Maybe there's a camera here that filmed the same truck, or, well, it wouldn't be the same truck. It would be her vehicle driving up like that. could be something like that. I think it's more ping uh, information that it pinged up in here, and they're checking this vast desert up in here. You know, there, there's, there's a whole road that goes up here in the rivers, and, you know, it gets pretty crazy at that point. Yeah, now th we don't do the crazy stuff on this one. So uh, what Robert said, hey, they, they, you know, the all-encompassing they, seem to think he might be wearing a brace or prosthetic the way he was walking. If you zoom in on his leg, you can see better. <laughs> that might affect how far he would walk and how fast. <laughs> yeah, it would also make it pretty difficult to... Uh, hey, thank you. Quietly frozen. Yes, everybody. Let's zoom in on the prosthetic leg. It's right after, right out of The Fugitive, the, telev the movie that we had with Harrison Ford. Uh, the prosthetic... Uh, well, in that case, it was an arm, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm glad I'm making you laugh, Stephanie. That's what we do sometimes over here. You know, it's not normally, uh, you know, funny, happy topics, but at the same time, God, what in the hell happened? Wow, that's wild. Hmm. Huh. Let this turn this off over here. 
It's like a thousand windows got opened up. Yeah. Oh, you thought it was? What about the... You left out the oxygen tank, Mag. Did you see behind his left calf, he actually had a miniature oxygen tank that was supplying oxygen to his, um, his lungs that um, he definitely is suffering. There's no doubt in my mind when I look at this suspect that he is suffering from emphysema, okay? And uh, if you notice also, there's a camera on his left shoulder bulging out from underneath the hood. It's absolutely obvious at that point and if it wasn't bad enough for this poor bloke, <laughs> he, was, uh, he was missing a leg, as we just heard above. As a matter of fact, this guy was probably shoved through a meat grinder at some point in his life, and somehow somebody sewed him back together, and now he's out there abducting people. Because when you look at him, his legs are, woo! They weren't able to get all that quite put together, uh, but now he's, he's moving just fine. Oh my God, unbelievable craziness out there. Hmm. Hey, thanks Sherlock Hemlock. Well, that's what somebody actually mentioned that and then up in the chat, but it was also mentioned recently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, seriously, you guys. Um, you know, one thing we haven't ruled out yet, and I think we should discuss, is was it possibly alien abduction? Now, before you... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how crazy it gets in these groups. You get what I'm saying? Like, if you watch these Facebook groups, people come up with the craziest things you've ever seen in your entire life. I mean, they just say, they, whatever pops in their head, and they always start the sentence off like this. Hey, is it possible that? Hey, thank you, Sandra Turner. Yeah, is it possible that? Man, when you get the is it possible that statement, you're in trouble, man. You are in trouble because you have to admit that things are possible, right? But you don't want it. You know, you don't want to tell them that because they'll run with it. Did you hear that? The guy said it was possible. Humpty yeah. Dumpty. Had a great fall, yeah. Thank you, Sandra Turner, for the cat eye donation. So here's the thing. I, uh, when somebody goes, is it possible that it was alien abduction? You know what You know what I need to say is, well, if you believe that there's other life in the universe and that we here on Earth are not the only civilization out there, and if there was perhaps another civilization that wasn't inundated with dinosaurs for 60 million years, they might be 60 million years uh, ahead of us and therefore would be able to travel throughout the universe and um, visit other planets. And if you believe that that is possible, then we have to say, then yes, it is possible that an alien flew down and abducted, okay? Uh, however, what do you think? Do you think it's a good chance that that happened? Absolutely not. As a matter of fact, I'd put it in one in 79 quadrillion of a chance. But hey, you said it was possible, okay? Well, just 79 quadrillion, Gray? It should have been 80. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, you know, here, here's the craziness in, in some of these Facebook groups. Somebody said, my God, it would take about, God, probably... Uh, 30 seconds to drive from where her car was to Lowe's and the person said <laughs> it's only 20 seconds okay 
Like, wow, ooh, you slew. Who cares about that? You know? And it's just, uh, it, it drives me nuts, you know? I mean, the, the petty stuff that goes on in there. And one of them said, didn't even read my post, probably read the first sentence and then the picture. And so I said, yeah, I addressed all that in the, in the post. Did you, did you read it? And they go, you're so rude. <laughs> you're rude, you're so rude. No, they said I was rude, Mary Lou. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I read it. Well, what? Yeah, so the, um, you know, so they got angry that I challenged them because they didn't read the post. And then instead of just accepting, oh, you're right, they go, look how mean Gray is. Listen, oh, he was mean to me too. And then it starts those posts. You know how it goes. Uh, I think, yeah, I think if anybody types in PayPal, it just shows up. All right, so thank you to Cheyenne R. Thank you very much on PayPal, ironically. And then we've got uh, oh, cool. Simplify sent in a uh, PayPal, and then also Delva Johnson. The freak. All right. Got it. Got y'all in there so far. Big bully gray. Not sure what that means. Oh, bully. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You know what I, I figured out, though, is if, if you're confident about something and you believe that what you're saying is rational and, uh, and, and especially if you really know something to be true, that's when people call you a narcissist because <laughs> they think they know it all. You know, you get called a narcissist for knowing something to be true. So uh, if you're walking down the street and somebody says, hey, what's two plus two? Uh, you tell them um, that it's 17, okay? Because if you say it's four, they'll go, are you sure? And you go, yeah, oh, you're a narcissist. Yeah, you just come up with some wild shit, you know, and then then it'll be accepted. Hey, thanks, Jetta Drones. Heart, heart, alien, mug, alien, <laughs> heart, heart, support, heart, heart. Wow, that's a lot of aliens. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's the other term they say? Oh, yeah, you're... You're a bully if you don't accept somebody's ludicrous statement. Okay, so I'm going to say for the nine millionth time, everybody, um, um, this is what I believe, and if you don't like it, you don't have to be here, but uh, this is what I think. I respect everybody's right to have an opinion. You get what I'm... Oh, that's right, 22, jeez. I expect everybody's right to have one. Okay, so I'll be like, go ahead, what's your opinion? All right. However, I am not required to respect everybody's opinion like you always hear. Oh, you have to respect their opinion, Gray. That's insane. Do you understand that? Do not ever let somebody who has a false opinion, let it, don't, do not let it stand and do not let it just kind of continue on and go, hey, you know, everybody has a right to an opinion. No way. Forget it, man. Don't do it. You know, if, if it's a ludicrous, that, that would be like saying that when a pedophile walks up to you and tells you what they believe in, you should say, well, I, I respect your opinion. Would you really say that to them? No, you would not, okay? And I'm uh, comparing it, but there's different levels there. You know, there's all these people out there that whatever they say, the craziest, wacky things that they want to say, they want you to say, I respect your opinion. And that's not true, Okay. You do not have to do that. Yeah, I'm, um, you know, let's see, what am I looking at? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I'm not sure. I'm trying to read comments. Oh, boy. God. Huh? 
Yeah, but we, we, we're not watching that channel, though. Brittany? I, mean, I was doing a show. I'm trying to read the uh, comments, I'm trying to figure out what you guys are even talking about. Oh, I lost my music. Darn it. Yeah, I gotta have that playing. Yeah, so are you guys all hanging out over there playing video games or watching games and stuff? Because they didn't see anything, Zozo. You, you've asked that like 95,000 times. The other person was just probably sitting in their car, listening to music, reading something, and the guy walked over quietly and, and you know, did something a certain way where he had her slide over and all the windows are shut. So it's not like you're gonna hear anything. <laughs> and how do we know she hasn't said something yet? Is she supposed to come out and start talking to the public? Come on, you guys. They might have already talked to that person and said, oh yeah, yeah, he walked in front of my car. I just didn't see anything happen back there. Yeah, we don't know because they cut the video up, Zozo. We've been told that about 50,000 times. All we see is when he's over there. He probably comes in from another place. They just start there and have him come walking towards us. Huh? Yeah, they've already had the lady came forward, I'm sure. They've already talked to that person. The brother didn't say that. He doesn't know the answer to the question. I guarantee it. He said yesterday uh, that, yeah, they probably have talked to him. But, it, you know, if you're out there, come forward. You know, because he doesn't know. I guarantee it that they've spoke to the person that was in that car because they were waiting also to either go into Lowe's or to... Um, and all you have to do is watch the surveillance camera and see what happens. Does the lady get on the uh, the shuttle or does she go inside the building? And if not, I mean, they've tracked her down. They've asked her questions. Just don't, don't worry about that part. There's nothing interesting about that anymore, okay? I know it's an angle to talk about, but... Oh, yeah, yeah, I do it all the time. <laughs> Come on, Zozo, don't you just think that's pretty obvious, though? Seriously. He didn't, the brother um, said, you know, they probably already talked to her. We went through it, and he goes, but if you're out there, you know, come for it, you know, because he doesn't know. But don't you think it's pretty obvious? Uh, who looked like somebody meeting somebody? The other person? Right, he does. He actually just appeared. I just explained it to you, though. They edited the video where they started him way back there, and then he walks all the way forward. I don't know. Why, here's what I don't understand. Why they released that much video when you can't even see the guy back there. It's a completely... It's ridiculous. Like, why didn't they just release the part where he's starting to walk towards right near the camera and then he goes and stands with his back to it? Did we really need to see him when he was a tiny speck way off in the distance? Yeah. Yeah, but I already explained that part. He just appears. It's just like in the Knick and Jenkins case. When the camera turns on, all of a sudden there's a person there because it didn't detect motion in this case they intentionally just showed us what they wanted to show us you can literally here i'll i'll just let me take the time i don't want to just keep going back and forth yeah he was walking all around in circles looking around and mocking around at that moment he starts off there comes back that's what we're saw, we saw that definitely is happening Yeah, I don't know if he pushed anybody. She just slid over based on a command, you know. 
Yeah. Yeah, so uh, let me... I'm just going to screw up everything because I've got the car in here based off of a still frame, but that's her vehicle. The guy's staring right at it, see? But let me, let me zoom in over here so you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah. See, he's not even there yet. Watch how he just uh, uh, an op see. Boom. See that? See, they just edited it that way. Watch it again. <laughs> See, look at now, Stephanie's encouraging the craziness. Here, watch. See how he just shows up? It already starts. There's nobody there. Watch. Boom. Okay? And right now, there is video. You see a car moving. This guy's just standing there, looking. And he's probably looking at her right now, and he's hiding in the dark. He's looking at um, Naomi over there. <laughs> All right? So now this car pulls up. And he's quite a bit of ways. He's way at the end of the long. So let me let me show you that again. Man, just the crazy comments that people make. It's unbelievable. Um, all right, so right now he's standing way over here. That car pulls in more like in this area. So then he starts walking, goes right in front of the headlights, walks all the way down. Then he comes right here, stands right here, and he looks again back at the car. And maybe at this time when he was standing there, he was looking, watching to see if she's driving in yet. Because remember, he said it drove, it came in before um, he was standing there. I don't know. Now it's hard to remember exactly what he said. But, but see, there, there's nobody there. Watch. Oh, well, he's there right there. But there's nobody there right now. And here's where they edit it. They edit it, and boom, they put him there because as he was walking around, at one point he was right there. Well, it's just because they want... I don't know why they did it. I just asked the same question. I said, I don't know why they did that. <laughs> just, oh, man. Well, I mean, so that so that car pulls in, and then the light goes on, then the guy walks from way back there. You can see how many steps he's taken, like quite a few, and then he walks pat through the light with his prosthetic leg. Don't forget that. And now he's looking over at her car, basically, right now. Well, no, he's waiting for her to still come in because he's looking at a, like a 45 degree angle and she's more off to his left at this point. And then look at that, he does a little uh, Michael Jackson moonwalk. It's really weird. See, I'm just kidding. And then he sort of heads back over there again, does a loop, and I think, you know what I think? I think right here, he probably maybe has seen her you know, had seen her car come in. And then he walks around and then he comes in front of the camera. And then he actually walks right over here again with his prosthetic leg. And then he stands there and he looks at her car, which is just above that area right there. It's right up here. He's looking right at it. And I don't know why they didn't just show us that part. I know, they just, sometimes they just do that, like as a, for no reason at all, Zozo. They give you, like I've seen surveillance footage released that's 10 minutes long and only three seconds of it is worth a damn. There's nothing else going on. But then there's three seconds of meaningful video. So you always wonder why they do it that way. And obviously in this one, they cropped it up. They cropped the timing. They cropped out the car. Okay. But I'm sure that they know who that person is that pulled in at this point. It'd be a very simple investigation. So I'll just play it one more time for you guys. <laughs> you guys are crazy. 
Yeah, he knows her, watched her routine. Yeah, we've gone over all that. If somebody knows it. Well, you don't know if it's an ex-boyfriend or not, Charles. How can you say it looks like he's an ex-boyfriend? <laughs> That's a ridiculous comment. You know, you don't even know what what the guy she might want it. She might date guys that are three feet tall. You have no clue who it is. Could be somebody she went on a date with. Could be somebody she works with that liked her, but then she rebuked him, and then maybe, you know, it could be that um, harassment stuff that was going on at work. If that's true, it sounded like that was real. Could be that. There's a whole bunch of different things, but it definitely sounds like somebody who was aware that she would be there at that time and knew specifically what time she would normally get there, got there, waited, and then walked around making sure the coast was clear, came in from behind so that, again, wouldn't um, let the person who just pulled in notice, uh, notice him, and then comes, walks all the way around, goes behind her, has her slide over, he takes her car, and then 10 hours later, his pickup truck is driving by Sherwin-Williams. Man, I was hoping to get off of this case, but it's just one crazy thought after another coming in. Well, yeah, just say maybe it's a boyfriend, not I think it's his, you know, what, what did you say up there, Charles? It was... To me, it looks like he's an ex-boyfriend. How in the hell can it, you say that? He just looks like a guy, you know, a stalker type. Just say, hey, you know, based on what he's doing here, maybe an ex-boyfriend would know something like that. Yeah. Mm, no, haven't seen that one. Yeah, let me, let me explain it for the 9,000th time. That's a hard word to say, by the way. The video is a lot different than this. As we heard from the brother, they edited it out. They cropped out the, her vehicle as well. They wanted everybody to focus in on the guy walking. Now, why they, you know, uh, gave us the video where he's way in the background and he walks forward, I don't know. But it could be that you would think it's even weirder if he just appeared out of nowhere um, close up. Like there was nothing there and then boom, he just popped up. That would be pretty weird, too. I can't say thousand, even one time. So, no way I could do it three. Oh, yeah, the colostomy bag. You forgot about that one. Yeah. Yep, yep, the press conference. There's a new, another press conference tomorrow. Maybe they'll give us some more information. Yeah. I mean, that, that, you got to admit, that's one of the best ones ever, LM, right? The colostomy bag. That was literally a theory in the Delphi case that the, the, the killer on the bridge had a, col, uh, a a colostomy bag. That's what that thing was that he, you know, not, it wasn't a, uh, a fanny pack. It wasn't his shirt untucked. It was a colostomy bag. And the reason it's brown, well... You just think through that a little bit. Whoa. No, it's insane, Tracy. That's all I can tell you. It's uh, unbelievable, really. The, the craziness in society never ends. Hey, thank you, uh, Stephanie, on PayPal there. Very kind of you. Stephanie Smith.
And also at Marine Co. Yeah, she said that she's got, um, she had a uh, pretty bad cold. It turned out it was COVID. But that's the, and she was vaccinated. See, that's the whole point of being vaccinated so you don't make it to the hospital. Looks like a Mauser. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember? I got an email from somebody and they go, Gray, he's, yeah, that's right. It was something like what Dan just typed in. It's a Mauser pistol. You know, it was really specific what type of pistol he had underneath the jacket. And there's literally no way of ever knowing that at all, uh, except this guy was just so sure of it. And I said, well, I think he's got on polka dot underwear. Now, can you dispute that? And see, that's what they bank on, that you can't really refute it, because I can't see underneath it. Well, because it was brown. Uh, this account, it was brown. I guess if, the, uh, I guess if the, the killer hadn't drank a lot of liquids that day, he'd have really dark yellow pee and inside of a bag that might look brown so I think he might be onto something there hey thanks Cammy Curry <laughs> conspiracy Tuesday is that tomorrow or today Chewbacca uh, yeah, I don't even know what day it is oh, I'll be Chewbacca if you want me to love my grave Chewbacca I'm sorry well thanks Cammy Curry <laughs> yeah some people like me, some people hate me. That's all right. Uh, okay, this account. Okay, I don't need to. Every single time you always have a follow-up. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Does anybody else have any more they want to uh, look at on this? I mean, I, I really, I just want to, wow, that matches up perfectly. Look at that. Even that truck there has, why didn't the person in this car come forward? Maybe they were sitting there waiting too. You know, the reality is there could have been a lot of people there waiting and the way it went down didn't, wasn't, there was no, there wasn't a lot of violence or anything. She just moved over at his command. So it could have been something like that. I know Tuesday's tomorrow, this account. I know it's tomorrow. I just said, I don't even know what it, the day it is half the time. Yeah, you can watch it one more time. There we go. He's back right here. You can barely see him over there. It's the little dark object over there. Then this car pulls in right where he's standing. And no, it has nothing to do with it. That car has nothing to do with the kidnapping. Okay? Nothing to do with it. All right, so it pulls in. Has its lights on still. And they're not on that long. I mean, a lot of times, sometimes when you stop a car, the lights stay on for a certain amount of time anyways. And when it's dark outside, right? So the car is pulling up. Now he's walking through the headlights in just a moment here. Yeah, so I guess he stands there for a little bit of time while her headlights are on. I don't know why they, they didn't want to leave it there so that we see you have so many why questions they just they're it, just don't think about it man I wouldn't be able to sleep if I was you guys you know just look at it and go well they just didn't want us to focus in on the car because everybody goes oh look at that that's a car everybody look at that's a car what they want you to do is look at him and see if you recognize him that's it 
super freaks. If you put the car in there, just like you're doing, hey, look at there's the car. Now look, he's looking over at the car. You know, it's everybody focuses in on st other things than what they wanted you to focus in on. You get it? I just explained to you the why. I just gave you the why. I just told you why. Like 19 times in a row. I don't know if I could do it again. I just gave it... Uh, <laughs> hey, thanks, Tracy. Just give me the answer. I did. Because it's people like you who keep wanting to see the car. All they wanted you to do was look at the guy and say, do you recognize this person? That was it. They actually told the brother that. And then the brother told me that. That's what they told him as to why they cropped it out. You get what I'm saying? Yee-hoo! <laughs> you guys are absolute wackos, man. Did you hear how Gray talks to his subs? <laughs> yeah, they're just not that funny, though, Stephanie. They're, they're always these types. I guess those are okay, too. The ones that sound like this at the end. Yeah. It allows me to do that. He doesn't drive a Ford Mustang, though, Gene, so I don't know. Yeah, I could imagine, Sarah. I, I feel it's almost it's similar in a way. You know, you got these unruly students, you know, like Zozo, that um, <laughs> they keep asking a question that you've already answered 19 times, or they'll ask you about what you've already covered five minutes before, Oh, look at that. <laughs> I, I got thrown in jail by TTJO Tracy. Oh, and this account tossed me in there, too. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, he's got gout. Um, obviously, about a diarrhea coming. And hence the colostomy bag. <laughs> yeah, there you go. What Mag just typed in. This is exactly what you hear a lot. <laughs> Those types of questions. Like, I wonder why he's walking instead of skateboarding. Hmm. Well, maybe because he doesn't skateboard. You ever thought of that? Or maybe he didn't want to bring one with <laughs> I mean, like, here's the thing. Here's the thing, everybody. Sometimes people have thoughts. And what's cool is... You don't always have to say your thoughts. Just think of it and go, oh yeah, that's silly. Forget it. Uh, hey, thanks, Billy Juliana, for, oh wow, negative five there. That's uh, And then bail payment tomorrow got me to even. Uh-oh, uh-oh. And then uh, Lee D got me in there for negative seven. Oh, and there's Melissa, 23. Definitely yeah, got me bailed out right there, I believe. Bail payment. But why, Gray? <laughs> you guys are hilarious. I, you know what I think? I think Zozo works for... You know that show called Punked? You know, with... Uh, I keep thinking that... Um, what's his face? What's, his, what's that guy's name? Uh, yeah, it's like, ah, uh, oh, shit. He's going to pop up and say something, and I'm going to go, oh, yeah. Yeah, Kurt, uh, what's his name? Starts with a K. Kushner. Yeah, Kutcher. Kutcher. There you go. Yeah, I think Ashton Kusher is just going to keep it'll pop up in my face anytime now. But why great? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it could be something like that. 
Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, I got bailed out. I can get out. Hey, thanks, LM. I'll put you in there. All right, what else? What else you guys got? Any uh, other questions? Because right now we're just at a lull of information. Uh, we know this guy got there about 5 something in the morning, was walking around the parking lot waiting for her specifically, it looks like, to get there. He probably parked his car either over at Sherwin-Williams or Lowe's uh, at the time, walked over here, abducted her in her own vehicle, and then some 10 hours later, you, he is caught on surveillance driving his truck by Sherwin-Williams. Hey, thank you, Meg. Hey, your internet's working tonight. It's freaking, uh, it's a miracle. Bow them out. 1XE, welcome to free. Hey, welcome. Yeah, we... We already said that. You must be on rewind mode, Stephanie. Because we are, we brought up a Aston Kutcher like three minutes ago. <laughs> Imagine a teacher having rewind mode. Whoo, boy. Although I, c I could imagine that class is probably like that most of the time, you know, like. Oh, thank you, TTGO Tracy. On PayPal and uh, Carolina Girl. All right, getting uh, everything locked up in the spin at the end right now oh yeah well you can watch on replay that's good for the kid because some teachers are so slow I'd rather play it and uh, speed it up a little bit you know like doubles time I mean here's the thing uh, you know the whole uh, concept of ADD for students I think is bullshit okay I think what it is is you got these kids that play video games and their minds work really fast so they're in class, and you got a teacher that sounds like this. Watch. All right, kids. Yeah, if you you could uh, pull out your book, you know, your book titled um, History 101. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Cindy, would you turn it to page 227? And if you could read the first paragraph on there, that would be terrific. Man, that kid over here that's brains work, that the brain works a million miles a minute just going, here's what you get on to. You know, he wants you to get going, okay? He wants you to get going on, on you know, move it around. Uh, make, you know, make it quick. Ding, 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 ding. You know, have it be multi, uh, you know, Disciplines, you know, like a video over here, uh, something on a chalkboard over there, ding, 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 and let's let the dorks be the ones that are left behind. You know, the the bookworm type. You know, Miss Sally Smith, who sat in the cor uh, corner, uh, you know, with the glasses on, the long hair, and just sat there and could read like the Dickens boy. And always the teacher's pet got. <laughs> you could. <laughs> you probably. <laughs> You're probably going, wait, wait, did this happen to you, Gray? <laughs> that seems a little too specific. You know, it's, a, it's like it's too narrow down there. I'm not sure who you're talking to, Mountain Jam 71. Oh, you must be on rewind mode, too. Yeah, that wasn't her real name, but I think there was a Sally. I don't remember what her last name was. Uh. <laughs> yeah, well, the thing is, is, you know, those are the ones that always kick ass in the rigid structure that they have. 
But some people don't think like that. They're more creative minded. They need visual stimuli. You know, reading a book. Whew, wow. That's uh Thank you, Shazzy D. Gray didn't pay court fees. Warrant was back out on him. Back to jail. Oh, me? Oh, you're sending me back to jail? <laughs> oh, man. That's brutal. She just actually uh, put me in the same category as the, well, the, the YouTuber we shall not talk about. I, um, I was out on bail, but now there's a warrant because I didn't pay court fees. Yeah. Books are incorporated in AR reading. What's that? See, I don't even know. Oh. Uh, I don't. I don't even want to know. Don't answer that question, please. It'll just be another. Well, Gray, it has something to do with the. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> Arkansas reading. Yeah, is that what it says? Well, look at Tamara gave me a tour payment and Patty Barnett a cheeseburger. Is that the cheeseburger money, honey? Is that what that is? Oh, wow. Wow, I was almost out. And then Plato said, no, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, and then so did Billy Juliana. So I think we were at, we were at plus seven, minus two, minus seven. Okay, minus seven. Man, Tracy, look at this. No, no bail. Man, so much uh, hate for Gray. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sound like Mary Lou in a minute. What do you mean, Gray? I don't cry, Gray. You cry on every freaking episode. Every single show at the end, you cry like a baby. Gosh, Gray, that is a nice dream. Stay in there. It's safe. Thanks, Billy. Wait a minute. So you guys are thanking them for keeping me in prison? I guess it's more fun. <clears throat> I don't know. But that's another thing they can do is, you know, if that guy had his cell phone with him in his car, for example, they could do a data dump. But there's a lot of cars that drove by right there. You'd have to have one that sort of, st I don't know. Ah, that's the FBI can track that shit. They're, they might be able to get this guy. Cry for noodles. <laughs> no effing way, stay in the slammer. But why? No effing why, way, Zozo? Stay in the I, I don't get it. Why? <laughs> I know. I notice Mag keeps thanking the people for keeping me in the slammer. Now I'm wondering, is there a conspiracy here? Because I'm mean. Oh, that's what it is. Should he stay or should he go? I think we're at the... Um, what are we? Minus two now. No, no. Actually, now it's minus five because Zozo kept me in there. Thanks, Tracy. Let me get you in the... Should Gray stay or should he go? Smiley face. Smiley face. Oh, there it is. Kathy Frydenmaker got me. I think that paid me up square. It's not really bail. It's, uh, you know, paying my court fees. All right. There we go. I got out. And look at Blue is absolutely bored to, to tears. And no, the numbers don't work tonight. Yeah, why is that, Stephanie? Why is that? I don't even know who you are. Never heard of you. Fail. Uh, let's see. Uh, data dump. 
dumping grounds. Blue is in the slow teachers class. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. Now, well, it'd be more like how Chloe is. See, when they, these kids, they have nothing to do, think about, so they're just like, ah, and they want to move around and do something, get some stimuli in their brain. No, it's definitely not a call-in. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was in there, but why, why am I mad at you, though? I mean, why are you mad at me? I put you in the uh, the spin. I mean, I just know you from tonight is what I'm saying. I haven't seen you too many times. I mean, I maybe maybe I have. I don't know. It just zips by. But what are you mad about? Because up above you said I'm mad, and I haven't really said anything mean to you yet. You know what I'm saying? Well, let's see, I watched the sisters TikTok live stream. Yeah. Right. It's just it's like listening to nothing. You know, you don't really get anything out of it. No, but what were you mad about, Stephanie? You didn't say what you're mad about because I'm reading it above. It said, "I'm so mad at Gray right now," and I never got the answer. Oh yeah, why? What's the answer? Why? I think that's what you're trying to get me to say. Well, good. I'm glad you like it. What are you mad about, though? Hey, this account, it's Naomi's sister. 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 Oh, well, you didn't answer the question, though. Hey, thanks, Sleuthin' Sandals. <laughs> okay, anyways, you guys ready? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get off of this case right now and go do the one that I stored for a couple days, all right? I don't, the brother isn't, wait, is the, is the, is the thing different again? I, I changed the icon now if it didn't change again I'm gonna be pissed off let me let me look no nah. hey everybody just do you know Cyandra Halford has retired but my oh the name didn't get changed stepping in. shit now I changed that god I get so tired of this hold on now he called in last night you gotta go watch that and Cold case. There we go. Dolores Della Pena. There we go. Got it. So the the title was wrong. No, the well the the image is okay. I'm confused in here right now. Didn't get an answer to how I was mean. How are you not, Gray? How are you not? If if it felt like you had catching someone's vibes. Huh? Catching somebody's vibe? I think it was like, well, I don't know the date, but I think it was around uh, after 3 o'clock, Susie. I think it was on the 12th, but we, they haven't told us. Yeah, well, I asked the same question with him when he was on the show last night. And he said he can't talk about any of those kinds of things like relationships relationships and everything all right so anyways 
I don't know, and I'm going to move on here. I've just got totally derailed again. I have no idea. You guys just talk about the minutia stuff that we've already um, sorted out. I mean, we had a the brother was on, talked about all those same things, and said the exact same thing. And but he gave us some information about what was going on in this parking lot. So that was interesting. And you'll have to go back and watch last night's show to get that. Well, I was hoping Stephanie Smith would give me uh, what, what I said or did. She seemed like she got upset. But if I, if I made you upset, I don't know what it is, but sorry about that no idea I mean I think I've seen you in there before but I haven't communicated with you <laughs> you seem like tonight's show made you laugh so that's why I why I saw it you know there's some uh, sheets from the bed because it just got changed and then blue just climbed to the top of it and made a nice little nest for himself Blue, what are you doing, buddy? Good for Blue. Yeah, hit that like button. Yeah. Do you have to, when you watch the TikTok videos, do you have to do it live? I don't use TikTok at all, so. Do you have to watch them live? <laughs> yeah, he just made a little nest. So he's over there. I don't know. Do you have to watch the TikTok videos live? Thank you, Sleuth and Sandals. Retired. Oh, you mean your name? Sandra Halford retired, so you, you're now Sleuth and Sandals? Okay. I get it. Okay, so how do you even get have it just show up when you're I mean, you have to get a notification and click on it jeez yeah. what you should do next time is send me a link so that I can record it and we have it you ever thought of that I mean that's that kind of stuff works you know because uh, I don't I don't get notifications and I don't know how TikTok works or any of that Yeah, I'd like to, uh, Mag. So here we go. I'm switching topics now. Just really tired of it. Man, just way overthinking out of here. All right, let's go to Dolores. So it was, I, it was way over here. I had this. Oh, maybe that was more recent. I just didn't get to it. Now, so I guess it's possible we hadn't talked about it, but I think I did. No, I did in like 2020. Okay. 
All right, so for those of you who are only here to watch this one, uh, this case on uh, Naomi, we're moving, we're switching now to something totally different, a 1972 cold case, I believe. Yeah, I have so many more. I only had four PDF files. Now I've got like 20 or 15, 17, I think. You guys ready? I've been ready, Gray. I only wanted to spend 20 minutes on there. But we got mired in some sort of a crazy quagmire. All right. Here we go, here we go. So police are investigating the possible abduction of a 17-year-old Taconi girl. This is 1972 in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia. Or at least that's where the paper was. Uh, Taconi, I guess, is the... So she lived, this is her house at the time, is right there. Probably fronts probably over here. Hmm, that looks like a duplex almost. All right, so uh, seventeen-year-old Takomi Takoni girl who failed to return home last night from a friend's house, where she helped make. Preparations for a girlfriend's wedding. Uh, the object of the intensive search is Dolores De La Pena of 90, uh, 4902 Raleigh Street. And let's just type that in to make sure. 4902 Raleigh Street. To, no, I didn't spell it right. So I got a, a W in there. There we go. So that's it. Who graduated last month from St. Hubert's High School, Hubert's High School. Her father, Ralph, reported her missing at 3 a.m. today. A police search of the neighborhood turned up Dolores' house key and a bracelet near the curb across the street from her home. Huh, all right, so, so like right over here was a, let's see, a house key and a bracelet right there. Man, was she abducted right there? That, that, that's pretty wild. Uh, let's see. Also found in the same spot was the girl's jacket and crucifix. Okay. Police said droplets of what appeared to be blood were also on the, in the street. Dolores was last seen at 11.30 last night by a girlfriend, Carol Nichols, at Frankfurt and Torresdale Avenues. Okay, so right, right around in this area. The last scene by girlfriend. Yeah. 
at 11.30 last night by a girlfriend, Carol Nichols, at Frankfurt and uh, Torresdale Avenues, where she was waiting for a trolley to go home. Carol told police that Dolores had just missed a trolley and that the missing girl told her she would have to wait 20 minutes. Ah, oh, man. Man, that's brutal. She just misses the trolley, the bus, as it, you know. And so she had to wait 20 minutes. And so the friend probably left and left her sitting there for 20 minutes. Both girls spent the evening making plans for another friend's wedding. That was on uh, July 12th, this uh, article here. Apparently she went missing right around there. Failed to return home last night, so the 11th, I would imagine. All right, then on the 14th, uh, police here were to resume a search for an attractive teenager today. She's been missing. I mean, if, she, if they were ugly, would they put that in there? It's funny how they always, uh, it's attractive, everybody. Be att uh, pay attention. Uh, this one's attractive. You know, if we don't put attractive in there, it's our buzzword for we're not going to cover this sucker. I mean, it's really strange. Like, what difference does it make, you know? Attractive teenager today. She had been missing since Wednesday and is believed abducted. I mean, could you imagine if it actually said in here, uh, police here were to resume a search for an ugly uh, teenager today. She's, I mean, it's just ridiculous, right? Come on. Uh, Dolores De La Pena, 17, of the city's Tacone section, was apparently abducted about three blocks from her home. Earlier, police believed the girl may have hitched a ride after getting off a trolley. Police said the girl's sweater and some spots of blood on the pavement were found close to her home. Yeah. I mean, that part's weird. So well, how did that happen if she was abducted three blocks from her home? A trolley operator said he picked up a girl fitting her description at 11.30 p.m. Tuesday and led her off near the spot where the sweater was found. Okay, a trolley operator said... He picked up a girl fitting her description at 11.30 p.m. Tuesday. All right, let's go back to the one before. Uh, Dolores was last seen at 11.30 last night by a girlfriend. But, but see, that 11.30 guy said he didn't pick her up. And now he says he picked her up at 11.30 and led her off near the spot where the sweater was found about 10 minutes later. Wait. Okay. Hmm. That timing doesn't work there very well. And then there was no more articles until the 25th that said... Police have identified a mutilated body found in a field here as that of Dolores De La Pena, 17, who has been missing from her Philadelphia home since July 11. The identification was made Monday night after two detectives from the Philadelphia Police Department brought X-ray negatives to New Jersey uh, to New Jersey investigators. The headless torso was found by a resident who said he noticed a strange odor in a field near his home. He told police two arms were found about 100 feet from the torso. Man. Uh, the attractive teenager disappeared while uh, walking home from a trolley stop. So again, if they'd said, it would be like this. The attract, the ugly teenager, oh yeah, forget. Yeah, just, you don't need to put that in there. The attractive teenager disappeared while walking home from a trolley stop in the northeast section of Philadelphia. She was wearing dungarees, a gray blouse, and... Yeah, I always forget what the hell this stuff. Hold on. I think we looked this up back then in 2020. Oh, yeah. So that's like a dungaree, you know, overalls-ish type thing, right? <coughs> A gray blouse and thick solid shoes when last seen. Police said the morning after she disappeared, 
Her jacket was found near her home along with a crucifix she had been wearing. So right next to her home. Man, that's just... This is where those items are found, but she's not... wasn't found there. Torso and Woods is identified as missing Philadelphia girl. The headless, limbless torso found Saturday in a wood in a woods about 15 miles east of Fort Dixon has been identified as that of a 15-year-old Philadelphia girl who disappeared two weeks ago. According to spokesman for the Ocean County Prosecutor's Office, the body of Dolores De La Pena, a 4902 Rawl Street in the city uh, the city's uh, Taconi section was positively identified last night by comparing x-rays of the girl's spine taken in life and yesterday. Miss De La Pena disappeared July 11th while walking home from a trolley stop near her home. Reportedly, Miss De La Pena was last seen alive at about 11.30 p.m. by a friend, Carol Nichols, 17, of Rose, Roosevelt uh, Boulevard. See, what's weird, though, is then she said she had to wait 20 minutes to get picked up, but then the other trolley driver said, oh, I picked her up at 11.30, which is the one that she missed, I guess. I mean, it's really odd. Let's see. Uh, reportedly, Miss Della Pena was last seen alive around 11.30 p.m. by a friend, Carol Nichols, 17, of Roosevelt Boulevard, Philadelphia, as Miss Della Pena... As Miss De La Pena got off a Route 5 trolley car at Frankfurt and... Is that the one that we... Yeah, Frankfurt and uh, Torresville, yeah. Oh, so she got off the trolley car there? And yeah, everything's just mumbled in here. <clears throat> got off a Route 5 trolley car at Frankfurt and... Torzell Avenues to wait for a Route 56, okay, there you go, trolley to take her home. The two girls had been out together that night. According to police, Miss Nichols, who stayed aboard the trolley, that's exactly what I was picturing, like um, at Frankfurt and Torsdale, told them Miss De La Pena had just missed a Route 56 trolley, commenting she would have to wait about 20 minutes for another one to come along. After catching the second trolley and later getting off, she began a four block walk to her home near the Tacone Palmyra Bridge. It was during this walk, police believe, the apparent abduction occurred. Hmm, I wonder where it, where it, where it dropped her off at. It doesn't really say that specifically. But they're catching the second trolley. So after the friend left in the 50, uh, the Route 5 trolley car, and then she got on, let's see, a Route 56 trolley ticket. So she waited for another 56 trolley. She got on that one. So after catching the second one, that was going to be about Huh? What are you guys talking about in there? Yeah, we had that discussion the other day, remember? About the trolleys. Yeah. <laughs> After catching the second trolley and later getting off, she began a four-block walk to her home near the Tacone palmyra Bridge. She began a four-block walk to her home near... Okay, so she began that walk near the... Let's go to there so we can see that. Tacone. Okay, so I guess it would let her off over here. Oh, there he is. Okay. I already had a pin there. So she got off right there. And then there it is. One, two, three, about four blocks. That makes sense. So she was probably dropped off. Not here, but I would guess. Uh, I 
How come there's two of those? That's weird. I think she probably got off over here, I would imagine. Or, I don't know, maybe the trolley went like over the bridge and then goes straight, but she needs to get off, so walk down, would walk down Keystone here. But isn't it weird that her house key and everything was found right across the street from her house? I mean, she made it all the way to her house or the abductor just tossed stuff out right at her house, I mean. Okay, so after, let's do that part again. After catching the second trolley and later getting off, she began a four block walk to her home near the Tacone Palmyra Bridge. It was during this walk, police believe the apparent abduction occurred. Calvin Woolley, chief of Ocean County Detective, said that although the girl's torso and arms have been recovered, her head and legs are still missing. The badly decomposed and mutilated body of the girl was found by a township resident who had been walking his dog in a woods near Oakwood and, let's see, near Oakwood. Do I have a second? Oh, man. Darn it. I'm going to need to get that. So, hold on. Jeez, what did I just do right there? <laughs> I have to go find this article. Sorry. Right. <clears throat> yeah. All right, this is on uh July 25th, 1972, Philadelphia. Now that was Camden. Wait, what is that? Well, it says Camden, New Jersey, so I gotta. Popping up again. Okay, there we go. I think I found the right one here. I think, yeah, page two, column eight. Right here. All right, so let me, uh, I'm gonna clip this out the same way. And get it. I think this is a, this, I think this is like, the quintessential article here. It's got everything in it. Um, I don't have a P.O. box. I was thinking of getting one, but... One of the virtual ones, you know? Okay, so that was the 25th. So the other one's B. Yeah, there we go. And the 25th.
Are you guys interested in the story at all? Or Yeah, I don't have a P.O. box yet. I've been thinking of getting one, but... Yeah? Okay. Alright, so we've got it over here. We've got the... Right down at the bottom it said, Walking his dog in a woods near Oakwood and Crescent Avenue. So now we can figure out what it is. Oakwood and Crescent... Is that how it was spelled? Yep, so I've already got a pin there, so there we go. Right around in this area. Yeah, that's just really far away. Okay. At uh, first, he thought he had found a doll that had been torn apart, Wooly said. As he approached the body, he noticed a strange smell. When he realized the doll was a human body, he called police. An autopsy performed yesterday by Ocean County Medical Examiner disclosed a long wound in the center of the chest, almost like a doctor would do, Wooly said, the girl who had been dead for about two weeks. Ocean County Prosecutor Martin... Anton said Miss De La Pena was definitely murdered, but right now there is nothing we can talk about. We have no suspects or leads. Miss De La Pena, who graduated from St. Hubert's High School in Philadelphia last month, was planning to enter Nazareth Hospital this fall to take a course as an x-ray technician. She is survived by her mother, father, and brother all at home. At the time of the girl's disappearance from Philadelphia, residents of the area told police they had heard a girl scream around midnight. Uh, one resident said she saw several men at an intersection striking a girl and then putting her in a car. Police investigating the report said they found blood stains on the pavement. The girl's parents told police their daughter had been wearing dungarees, a gray blouse, a jacket, and thick-soled shoes the night she vanished. The next morning, a crucifix and her jacket were found near her home. In addition, to detect, uh, in addition to detectives from the county prosecutor's office and township police working on the case, state police investigators said Philadelphia homicide detectives have been called in to help apprehend the killer or killers. All right. So I know we're getting to the reading portion. But uh, we're still not at the minimum portion for the the everything mug. Right now we're in the We Are Freaks mug range. So if you guys would like to continue to help out the channel, that would be great. And uh, also if you do a PayPal, you get a 50% extra chances. But if you do $5, you get two, which is really 100%. All right. <clears throat> All right, so uh, on the 26th, Slang Girl's Pals Face Requiz, a police, o of, let's see, a police official says investigators are convinced that the friends of Dolores De La Pena, who was mutilated, well, see, I guess there might be other searches with the space. See, there, see how there's a um, no space on De La Pena there? But every, most other places it is. I wonder how that actually worked for me there. Police officials say investigators are convinced that friends of Dolores De La Pena, whose mutilated torso was found last Saturday, can shed light on her murder but are remaining mute. Police say they will re-interview uh, some of the friends in, a, in the bizarre case in hopes of a lead. Some scheduled for quizzing have already flunked lie detector tests on certain questions. Yes, it was. This is from, um, is this one that you, well, the thing is I covered it in 2020, but I only had four articles, so it definitely wasn't 
anywhere near as uh, in depth as this one. Chewbacca? Oh, I'll do Chewbacca if you want me to. I don't remember it though, because that was two years ago. But uh, yesterday, more than a hundred police and volunteer firemen scoured a hundred acres of dense pine woods in Cassville and Rova Farm section of Jackson Township. The FBI has been working on the case since the dis disappeared on the assumption that she was kidnapped. The girl's head and legs have not been found. Miss De La Pena was last seen about midnight, July 11th, by neighbors who heard a faint scream and saw a girl being dragged across Tulip Street uh, to a car. So is that the... So her, her girl... Ah, crap. I think I saved this stuff. <laughs> oh, man. Whenever you get that, that's not good. Yeah, hold on. I think I already had it, most of this stuff mapped out anyway. <clears throat> Google Earth. Jeez, you're such a fragile program. It's amazing. But I love it, Google Earth. Thank you. Keeping it real. Okay, yeah, I think I got, yeah, so I had that stuff in there. So they said across Tulip Street. Wow. So she was like at her door and these people dragged her across? That's just wild. She was almost home. You don't hear him say that, though. Great, you are the best true crime YouTuber. Glad I finally joined the channel. Well, thank you. Thank you for uh, joining the channel. And what a nice thing to say, you know, based on uh, <laughs> some earlier comments, you just wouldn't know. Well, Gray, you're so mean. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, let's see. The girl's uh, head and legs have not been found. Miss De La Pena was last seen about midnight. July 11th, my neighbors who learned, heard a faint scream and saw a girl being dragged across Tulip Street to a car parked about 25 yards from her home. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Man. Witnesses described the kidnapper as about 20 years of age with bushy hair. So it's just one person. Wow. Okay. Well. And on the 27th, see, this is an actual morgue picture of somebody. And man, that's absolutely, that's how they should do it. I mean, somebody should know who that is, right? A week after Dolores de la Pena was abducted from in front of her Taconi home on July 11th, the body of a young girl was found on the parking lot in the rear of Chesterfield Hotel at, at Broad and Oxford Streets. It was discovered beneath an open third floor window of a room assigned to the girl and a man uh, when they checked into the hotel the previous night. At first, investigators thought it might be Miss De La Pena. The description was similar. Age 17 to 20, height 5'2", weighed about 118 pounds, hair long, medium brown. The body also had a scar on each shoulder believed to be vaccinations, as did Miss De La Pena. But old x-rays of Miss De La Pena proved that the body in the parking lot was not hers. These same x-rays were later used to identify a mutilated torso found last Saturday in a wooded area of Jackson Township. But now, as police press their hunt for Miss De La Pena's killer, the body found on the parking lot remains unidentified. The body is referred to as case number 3732. I wonder if that one's ever been solved. 
Weird. Torso of murder probe press. Police here and in New Jersey pressed their investigation today in the brutal murder of 17-year-old Dolores De La Pena. Police said they have questioned well over 100 persons so far in the continuing investigation. Detectives said a man in his early 20s was pick, picked up Friday at Fort Mifflin in South Philadelphia. They said they found a hatchet and a knife in his auto. No charges were filed, however. Okay, that was on the 29th. And then on the 30th, state police said two legs were found in a secluded section of Manchester Township Saturday, about seven miles from where the mutilated torso of a 17-year-old Philadelphia girl was discovered last week. Manchester Township Detective Sergeant Ronald Rearup said an elderly man walking his dog along the intersection of Ocean County 571 and 547. Did we find this one? There it is. So that's where her torso was found. Let's see how many miles this is. Yeah, so it's seven and a half as a crow flies. And this is 571 and... I think this used to be that number. I think we we found it somehow. Yeah, there. I think we were just looking at it. it was yeah, I got five seventy one there, and I'm pretty sure at the time I must have figured out why that why it, that's the right intersection. But so right in here in a wooded area here, her legs were found. Man, that's per whoever did this is psycho. I mean, if it was a 20-year-old kid, I mean, what the hell is he doing? I think he, almost like he didn't want her identified because it would lead to him, but, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, that's really strange for somebody young like that to be doing this. Well, that's not true, Ray Dahmer was... Okay, well, I mean, there's always going to be examples, all right? They were severed off near the pelvis... You know what's interesting? The original cut was almost like an autopsy, straight down the middle. And then now we've got these cuts right there. I mean, this seems like more of a professional, right? I mean, this isn't uh, like a little kid. Maybe he just looked young. We're almost about ready to play Dan's song again, aren't we? <laughs> Maybe Zozo's. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Should I do it? Play Zozo's? Yeah. They were severed off near the pelvis, Rear Up said, adding that state police were expected to run tests to determine if the limbs belonged to Dolores de la Pena last seen in Philadelphia's Tacony section July 11th. Her butchered body was found July 22nd. Hey, look at that. Dan Carr finally used the famous face. That's actually on the mug itself, that face right there. Her butchered body was found July 22nd in a secluded spot in Jackson Township. Police did decline to speculate whether the legs belonged to Miss De La Pena. <laughs> Don't you dare. Ah, well, I won't, as long as I don't get the silent treatment. Uh, the investigation into the kidnapping and mutilation murder of Dolores De La Pena, 17, has been extended to the New York area where the Daily News has learned. Uh, Calvin Woolley, chief of Ocean County, New Jersey, detectives confirmed the New York probe but refused comment. Dolores' torso and arms were found July 22nd in the, what is it, Pisney Woods of Jackson Township near a resort haven frequented by New York residents. 
I wonder if that's, uh, if you can see that. A resort. Oh, maybe this, the whole area here. Hey, thank you, Kathy Frydenmaker. Or, as I say, Kathy Frydenmaker. People always do that because they want everybody to know they're experts already. Hey, hey, I've been following this case. Now, no, then. How about let us go through it? All right. Thanks. Um, here we go. Uh, the honors graduate of St. Hubert's High School was kidnapped July 11th as she approached her home at 4902 Rawl Street after spending the evening with friends. Last Saturday, two, two decomposed legs tentatively identified as those of Miss De La Pena were found on a dirt road in the Ridgeway section of Manchester Township, a neighboring community about seven miles from where Torso. But um, Amber wrote it better than I, I just said it. I said it the way I say it. <laughs> because you're so mean. All right. Now we're uh, going to August 4th. Friend of 10 slain girls wake. Classmates and friends of 17-year-old Dolores De La Pena filed past her closed casket for three hours Thursday night in uh, Galzarano's funeral home at 7158 Torsdale Avenue. The white coffin was covered with flowers and floral displays for the honor graduate of St. Hubert's High School filled in an adjoining room. Across the casket was red ribbon from her grieving parents, Ralph, 47, a chemist at the Rom and Haas plant in Bristol, and Helen, 45, in described on, in, and inscribed on the ribbon was Our Little Girl. Dolores's mutilated torso, arms, legs were found in the wooded area near Toms River, New Jersey. She was last seen alive July 11th near her home at 4902 Rawl Street, or Raleigh Street maybe, to Coney, police have no clues about her murder. A uh, celebrated requiem mass will be offered at 9.30 a.m. today in Our Lady of Consolation Church. All right. I don't know. They're, I think they were trying to make it so she wasn't identified. They didn't realize, I mean, 1972, that was pretty quick that they were able to identify her. Clue of Slayers sought at grave. Just as some crimes follow a pattern, so do investigations. And the pattern of the investigation into the slaying of Dolores de la Pena was silent, uh, silently followed yesterday, and prayers were whispered at the graveside of the 17-year-old Taconi girl. Off in the distance were two detectives in shirt, short sleeves. One carried a walkie-talkie. Around the neck of his partner hung a pair of binoculars. So they were looking to see if somebody would show up to the funeral. They waited and hoped, hoped that maybe the binoculars would pick out the person responsible for the murder of Dolores, whose torso was found 22, July 22nd in a wooded area in Ocean County, New Jersey, 11 days after she was kidnapped from her in front of her home at 4902 Raleigh Street. The police hoped to spot something, anything that would aid in the investigation. The hope and wait was apparently in vain. As part of the investigation, police are circulating a flyer listing for the first time the description of a man suspected of killing Dolores. The man is described as between 20 and 25 years old, about 5 foot 8 to 5 10, slender build with brown chin length hair and bushy sideburns. Hmm. 
He was wearing a light-colored short sleeve shirt with button-down front and dark trousers. Police said the man was driving a maroon 1965 or 68 Chevrolet sedan. Also listed in the flyer was the clothing and jewelry of Miss De La Pena, which was not, has not been recovered. During the funeral mass, Father Arthur Centrella eulogized Dolores as the victim of an unjust aggressor. Wow, that's such a kind way of saying an absolute barbaric whack job. Police have almost reached a dead... You know what would be a really cool uh, pastor? It would be Grady Judd. <laughs> Wouldn't Grady Judd be a great pastor? He'd get up there and just be like... He'd be telling you the damn truth is what he'd be doing. Cops at Loss and Dolores is dead. Police have almost reached a dead end in trying to solve the murder. Let's see. Yeah, so he'd be saying shit like, Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? Or, You know, that's just one step above stupid. Five brain cells, four aren't working. Dolores 17 disappeared July 11th from outside her home. Police have a description of the killer. He's said to be about 20 to 25. So, you know, they're, they're trying to give a little bit better description here. And uh, 1972, about four months later. Yeah, those are the parents there. See, it's amazing. I don't know what the deal is, but the photography is so much better. I mean, look at how, how that just captures how they're feeling. I mean, it's horrible. I hope Dolores is waiting for me. Yesterday would have been Dolores De La Pena's 18th birthday. Her parents visited her grave. The Northeast girl was brutally murdered last summer, reported Joe O'Dowd. And then this is like a three... You know, three different pages here. I hope Dolores is waiting for me every night when I come home from work, Ralph De La Pena said quietly. Dolores was Ralph De La Pena's daughter. She was a young honor student who was found brutally murdered last summer in New Jersey after she mysteriously disappeared near her northeast home. So maybe uh, northeast... Well, let's see. I always thought this was Pennsylvania. I don't know why. But. Yeah, that's Philadelphia right there. So maybe just across the river or something. I don't know. Uh, yesterday would have been a day full of fun, excitement, at the De La Pena home on Raleigh Street in the Taconi section. It would have been Dolores' 18th birthday. Instead, De La Pena, his voice choked with emotion and lines of grief in his face, said yesterday and every day is still a nightmare to me. De La Pena and his wife, Helen, drove to Resurrection Cemetery in Cornwell's Heights yesterday to stand at Dolores' grave. Dela Pena's placed a simple basket of gladiola on the grave. Their heads bowed. They quietly said prayers for Dolores, their only daughter. As Mrs. De La Pena began to sob, her husband gently placed his arms around her. Slowly, the couple walked away. So that's, that's probably exactly what's going on right there. Things haven't been going too good for my wife, De La Pena said. The holidays are really bringing her down. I guess this will take some time to wear off. My wife can't understand why it was Dolores. Why it happened to her? She keeps asking over and over, why was it her? Why was it Dolores? De La Pena and Dolores had hoped for a car on her birthday. Or De La Pena said Dolores had hoped for a car on her birthday. She would have been studying to be an x-ray technician at Nazareth Hospital by now. Dolores' mutilated body was found July 22nd near an oak tree in a wooded area near Tom's River in central New Jersey, about 60 miles from her home. Uh, that's why New Jersey's in there. 
She had disappeared on July 11th, less than a block from... This is page three. You hardly ever see a third page of a, a story in the newspaper. Well, let's, uh, let's, uh, what does it say? Um, she had disappeared on July 11th, less than a block from her home. Dolores was last seen when she left a Route 56 trolley at Torsdale Avenue and North Street. Well, we know she walked and almost made it all the way to her house. In fact, I bet the person who abducted her was waiting for her to come home and got her before she made it into her house. Hey, thank you, Nikki124. Yeah, that's what I think. I think she walked all the way home. She was right there, and the person waited for her, and then as she was approaching her home, he dragged her and got her into his vehicle and took took off with her. Uh, <clears throat> hey, thank you. Uh, people have their minds set about... Like Adela Penn said, he was puzzled by newspaper stories and gossip that asserted that Dolores associated with a fast crowd. People have their minds set about certain things in Dolores' background. People would knock out some of those evil thoughts they had about Dolores if they had known her. I knew her better than anyone. I've known her since birth. That's why when people say certain things about my daughter it doesn't bother me I know her better than anyone well you yeah but I mean kids that age hide a lot of stuff from their parents I mean is, isn't that a truth out there right like uh, that's just the way it is I knew her better than anyone I've known her since birth that's why when people yeah we just read that every night when my wife and I would come from home from work she would have dinner on the table for us she would come home from school, clean the house, and then cook dinner. She cooked every meal herself. Adela Pena proudly read a letter from uh, Eugene Alessadroni Lodge of the Sons of Italy announcing the Lodge had voted to give Dolores High School, Dolores' High School, St. Hubert's, an annual scholarship of $500 in her name. And that was a lot, per, uh, you know, that's like, you know, four thousand dollars, thirty-five hundred dollars back then. She was a good girl, he said. Della Pena said the police department had been extremely helpful to the family. If it wasn't for them, I think my wife would have cracked. He continued. I never thought they were as helpful as they are. Ten detectives are still working on the Della Pena case. No substantive uh, new leads have developed in the five-month investigation. More than 2,000 people have been questioned or interviewed. One detective has helped make the De La Pena's life more bearable. Detective uh, Del Carlino is here every night, De La Pena said. Why I even call him John now? You know, why I even call him John now is how the sentence is supposed to be read. He's so helpful to my wife and me. Nothing is too much for John. He's like a brother to me. Ralph De La Pena speaks with some bitterness about the man and woman who boarded the same trolley as Dolores at, at Torsdale and Frankfurt Avenues the night of the disappearance. Police said the pair got off the trolley at different stops before Dolores. Police have been, been unable to locate either person. Hmm. They weren't involved in anything, and they won't come forward, De La Pena said. The police told me they don't even ride the trolley anymore. Why don't they come forward? Let the people open their eye. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of weird when people don't come forward. You know, maybe some of the rumors kept them from doing that, right? We, did, we haven't heard any rumors, but... You know, obviously there was there were some. All right, and then about uh, seven years later in the paper, uh, this is 1979 now. Not sure. Let's see. I know she's in here though. John F. Egan told police investigators yesterday that it was a call from Dolores in heaven 
that led him to avenge. So this is a weird psycho that killed somebody. I mean, who knows? I mean, this is pretty weird, though. John F. Egan told police investigators yesterday that it was a call from Dolores in heaven that led him to avenge the 19-year-old woman's death with the murder of James Morrow on thir- on Thursday. Well, she she wasn't 19. I mean, she was 17 at the time. Now, Egan, an ex-convict released from prison last November, then gave detectives the names of two other men he believed aided Morrow in the 1972 slaying of Dolores de la Pena of Taconi, whose headless, legless torso was found in a wooded area near Toms River, New Jersey. His story, completely unconfirmed, touched off a heightened investigation of de la Pena's staying, slaying, and at the, to- at the same time, reopened healing wounds for the slain girl's family. In the Della Pena's Holmesburg home, Dolores' father, Ralph, spoke in puzzled tones about the new events. Who is Egan to avenge my Dolores' death? Why Dolores' name? He kept asking. It just doesn't make sense. Della Pena and his wife were both upset were both too upset to go to work yesterday. Mrs. De La Pena was sedated and several relatives flocked to the house to comfort the family. This news shocked us and upset our whole life again, De La Pena said. We've been fighting Dolores' death for seven years. With the shooting, everything comes back. We've just uh, been going through hell. Police say they are actively pursuing all leads but are handling Egan's information very cautiously because of his recent mental problems and irrational behavior. Egan was arrested Thursday afternoon after police discovered Morrow lying wounded on the parking lot near Ed's Steakhouse in Castor and Wyoming's Avenue. Witnesses said they saw a man walk up to Morrow and fire several shots in rapid succession. They then heard him say, here's one for Dolores. Morrow died less than two hours later of gunshot wounds to the face and back of, uh, face and back at Parkview Hospital, but not before whispering his killer's name. Sources said Egan was confined with Morrow in the detention center last fall while awaiting trial on retail theft charges. They said Egan had been one of several hundred suspects picked up and questioned in the De La Pena slaying. Hmm. Said Egan had been, so Egan was picked up. But at the same time, had passed a lie detector test in his claim that he knew nothing of the murder. Morrow 31 of Nelson uh, St. Luzern was never questioned in the case. I wonder if in prison maybe that guy told him something. But he sounds like he's pretty crazy. Dolores was last seen being dragged from in front of her home, then in Taconi to a parked car about midnight on July 11, 1972. Ten days later, her torso was found in Tom's River at the following and the following week Police found her limbs in a remote section of Manchester Township. Um, let's see. They've usually asked me about different names. Hundreds, De La Pena recalled. Did Dolores know this one? Did Dolores know that one? But I never remember hearing any of these names. Egan and Morrow. I just hope it's all over. Why would he say this to Dolores? Why would he say this? Why would he say this is for Dolores? I can't. Um, understand it. Why? 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 There has to be something or someone he knows about De La Pena uh, that he he theorized about that. Why would he pick out Dolores' name? It's been seven years. I feel he must know something, but the whole thing puzzles me. Amid his confusion, De La Pena also expressed disappointment in the police department. The family learned of the new developments through the news media. It wasn't until yesterday that detectives contacted them personally. All right. And then, uh, 10 days later. Yeah. (laughs) 
Psychic says she can find the victim's head, everybody. Uh, the brutal July 1972 murder of Taconi teenager Dolores De La Pena has brought out even the wacko. No, I didn't say that. Um, I attended a seance in which the, ve- the medium described a murder similar to that of the De La Pena girl. Uh, on July 18, 1973, Dolores' father and aunt came to my house to see Judy after having read about the case. Oh, boy. Yeah. I mean, I know people get really desperate, so they'll do anything, you know. Yeah. All right. Then uh, they go to 1980. I'm not going to read that. Oh, look at that. But then it's not really, it's not related, right? Because it was 1979 in January, and this is 1980 in March, okay? A human skull found this week in a wooded area in Jackson Township might belong to the decapitated body of 17-year-old Philadelphia girl. Yeah, let me, let's go see. What did it say in here? Twice, Judy described the man she felt was the killer. Judy's impression were that the killer dumped the torso and arms last, that he started by disposing of the head. See, th- here's the thing. See, all this stuff is, you know, you might just look at it rationally and kind of, you know, uh, think about it in order. And so then you just assign it to psychic ability. Let's see. Um, I see the pickup truck parked at Lowe's. She felt Dolores' head was about 200 yards from where he tossed her legs. So that's what he thought. So let's see. Or she, sorry. Don't you think there's more female psychics? I think they're just sort of more like they have a better chance of suckering somebody because it's like it's just a sweet lady she's not gonna you know or a guy might come off as a used car salesman a human skull found this week in the wooded area in Jackson Township might belong to the decapitated body of 17 year old Philadelphia girl Ocean County Medical Examiner Dr. Walter Corrigan Friday requested the dental records of Dolores De La Pena. Corrigan said he hoped, let's see, headless body was discovered. Okay. Corrigan said he hoped the records would tell him whether the skull discovered Wednesday in a clump of woods near Jackson Old Freehold Road. And, okay, let's go find that. Uh, do I have her? I don't know if I ever put that her, where her head was found, so. Jackson Old Freehold Road. Jackson Old Freehold Road. Okay, Old Freehold Road, okay. <laughs> Well, it's not 200 yards. <laughs> All right, so that's uh, Freehold Road. And then the other one was, and Interstate 195. Okay, so there's I-95. Hmm, how does that work? Okay, there's I, there it is right there. It came down. So then we gotta follow that road. And now it's called something else. Old Freehold. That's nine. 
So I think that this right here, and it kind of keeps winding up here. I think it, it's probably like right around in this area. Wait, where the hell did it go? I just saw it. Oh, 195 is way up there. Man, I don't know how that works. Man. Old Freehold Road and Interstate 195. Maybe that's not there. Well, let's see. So this is this is, says Old Freehold Road. But when you follow that up, let's just say it continued like that. And it just sort of stops here. And 95, oh wait, was that it? <laughs> All right, hold on. Yeah, it just kind of stops right there. And 95 is up here. So I don't know, I don't know. I'm just gonna put like the head somewhere around here. Don't know for sure. Woods near Jackson Old Freehold Road and Interstate 195. Hmm. Belong to the body of Miss Dillapen. Uh, so he hopes that that's whose head that is. Okay. Uh, police found the girl's torso and arms in the field after a vacationer complained about a strange odor. Miss De La Pena's fingerprints had been whittled away. Oh, is that really true? See, they were trying to hide her identification. That's what I was saying. See, all the things that were done to her are what people do to um, individuals who they don't want identified because they feel like identifying them leads right to them. Okay, and so now we've got this extra step here. Ms. De La Pena's fingertips had been whittled away. Police aid, uh, police aid in an apparent attempt to prevent identification. There you go. Which was eventually made with the use of x-rays. See, he didn't count on x-rays. That's what I said earlier. So all this other, she wouldn't have been identified had, you know, like a head not been found or, you know, they, they didn't have x-rays available. The victim, a high school honors graduate, was last seen July 11th, 1972, stepping off a trolley. Witnesses told police they saw several men beat a young woman and force her into a car around the same time of Miss De La Pena disappeared. Traces of blood and some of the girl's personal effects were found at the scene. Corrigan said investigators from his office and the Jackson Police Department were also trying to determine whether the skull, which is being tested to determine its age and sex, matched the headless body of an unidentified man found in the area in July 1978. Skull found in Jersey. Oh, it's not hers. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> the skull found in the wooded area of Jackson. Probably it is that guy. Then. Last Wednesday is not that of Dolores De La Pena, the 17-year-old Taconi resident who was abducted, murdered, and dismembered in 1972. I'm disappointed, said the girl's father, Ralph De La Pena, who has waited almost eight years for his daughter's remains to be found. My wife, Helen, took it pretty hard. She was hoping this would be it. This would be the end. Well, what are you going to do? I guess what we just have to do is wait and hope. Detective Jim Churchill of the Ocean County, New Jersey Prosecutor's Office said a fire in the De La Pena family's dentist's office had destroyed Dolores' dental records, but said the dentist was familiar enough with the charts to determine the skull was not hers. Churchill said the skull, which was fractured, would be taken to the state medical examiner in Trenton. Yeah. So then we got the... Investigators continue to work leads in hopes of unlocking the 1970 
two cold case. This is from the Only on 2020. Fox 29 tonight, a possible break in a murder case. This case has stumped investigators for decades. Fox 29's Dave Schratweiser is live at Philadelphia Police Headquarters. And we do need to warn you here, some of the details of this story are pretty gruesome, right, Schratt? Yes, they are. Shana, this is a murder case that homicide investigators have never given up on. They've been chasing leads uh -huh. for almost 50 years now. Today, they used high-tech gear, dogs, and heavy equipment to dig for answers in the murder of 17-year-old Dolores De La Pena. This is the garage where homicide detectives and crime scene investigators spent the entire day digging as they try to unlock a 50-year-old murder mystery. The whole crew was here, uh, city police, detective, um, I think K-9, uh, they all came. Frank Yang witnessed the eight-hour long search for evidence as crews went digging deep into the ground under the garage he rents here. They dug up concrete, they dig about like maybe one or two yards deep. For the head? Um, and the dog was here, K-9. Excavator, yeah. they took it a lot of, a lot of ground, concrete, and they look at some somebody inside. Yang and sources say detectives came looking for the head of Dolores Del Pena, seen here in a graduation photo. She stepped off a trolley at Knorr and Torsdale in July 1972 and disappeared. The 17-year-old had just graduated from St. Hubert's High School. Her dismembered torso and body parts were found all over the Pine Barrens in South Jersey. It was a uh, missing body part, it was the girl's uh, uh, the head was missing. And they had came a few times already, probably five, six times. Frank Yang credited investigators' determination to solve Del Pena's murder after five decades. Sources tell Fox 29, police believe a local biker gang mistakenly thought Del Pena was involved in the disappearance of some drugs. They kidnapped and tortured her with a machete, then killed her. There have been no arrests. Did they find anything? No, and uh, they said um, they didn't find anything. They couldn't find it, buddy. They didn't find anything? No, nothing. They said nothing. She's they running the show. Lot of effort. Uh, yeah, that's Now, terrible. sources say several <laughs> of the suspects police believe were involved in this murder have died. A grand jury actually looked into this several years ago. No arrests and no charges. Fox 29, police believe a local biker gang mistakenly thought Del yeah. Pena was involved in the disappearance of some drugs. They kidnapped wow. and tortured her with a machete, then killed her. There have been oh, no arrests. Wow. Did they find anything? No. Jeez. And uh, they said um, they didn't find anything. They couldn't find it, buddy. That's what they, they didn't found, find anything. Eh? No, nothing. They said nothing. And they made a lot of effort. Now, sources say several of the suspects police believe were involved in this murder have died. A grand jury actually looked into this several years ago. No arrests and no charges. No indication tonight what led police to that garage and the dig today or where this case is going next. Wow, that's crazy. Still working it. Nice. Excellent. That's what Wikipedia has on it, like basically nothing. Well, that was that story, you guys. Um, that's when I was trying to get out more information on it uh, than I put out originally. Uh, it's weird, it doesn't even really ring a bell that much. I mean, it was two years ago. I might have just, it was probably a night where there was five cases and covered too much stuff that night. So I was glad to do it again. Yeah. Poor family. Yeah, bad enough. I mean, just, yeah. What a nightmare, right? Your daughter goes missing. And then they find her a torso only. So... I mean, that's exactly what everybody does when... Well, it's weird that they didn't... They, you know, they thought that they could identify... They didn't want her identified as if it would lead to them. But, I mean, what connection did she have? Was it... Did her... You know, did she have a boyfriend that had something to do with that? Maybe that's what the guy was talking about earlier. I don't know. But... Or just mistaken identity. 
But why didn't they want her identified? So they cut her head off, her arms, scraped off her fingernails so she couldn't have fingerprints. And they didn't want her identified no matter what. But they identified the, the torso and the legs quick. It's just wild. Yeah, that was absolutely ridiculous. And that makes more sense. So I think they're putting, the police were putting weight on a multiple people abducting her and beating her in the street and putting her in the car. And they found out where she lived and they waited for her. And when she walked by, they went and grabbed her and took her. And man, that's just, yeah, I didn't really realize that. Yeah, some of the gangs were that vicious back then, but I guess they've always been that way. Oh, thank you, LM, for the uh, PayPal. LM, as in Element Open. Yeah, well, I don't really have much more to add tonight. What do you guys want to talk about for 15 minutes? <laughs> I mean, I've had a lot of long nut days recently. But it's, but it's wild how there's stories like this that are really old and they're interesting. There's a lot of stuff going on, but... You just don't hear him talked about. Yeah. That's not what they said, TT Joe Tracy. Maybe I heard it wrong. Let me listen to it again. Maybe I heard it wrong. Only on Fox 29 tonight, a possible... 29, police believe a local biker gang mistakenly thought Del Pena was involved in the disappearance of some drugs. They kidnapped and... Yeah, they thought she was part of the disappearance of some drugs and they kidnapped her. Tortured her with a machete, then killed her. Yeah, they thought she was the one, not her boyfriend, her. Uh, just, you have to watch the show later, Zozo. All right, you guys, so that is it. And I'm going to uh, head on out of here. Oops, everything went off the screen. It was nice to do something else for a minute, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't know. Who knows? Probably a lot of motorcycle clubs out there. It doesn't say in the articles. Yeah, no problem. But uh, let me, uh, I, got, I have to go to a different screen because I lost the, the main screen that I can get all the names of everybody. I didn't have it on the right one to start with, so. Man, I'm tired. You know, uh, I've been trying to do this physical training, you know, like just the stuff, you know, get my body loosened up again. Yeah, you because know, ever since my neck surgery, it's been hard to do stuff, you know. But I've started, I've been feeling better, so I've been doing this physical, I don't know, it's not, it's not therapy, it's actual, you know, you're doing exercises, but 
You know, but I thought my next appointment was on Wednesday. And so today, I, you know, yesterday I did this exercise program that I already had. And then I, today I did a bunch of the exercises that they gave me. And then I look at my schedule and I had a class at three. So after I'm already tired, I have to go to that class. Hey, no, no problem, Mr. Billy Blue 69. We do those kind of cases all the time in here. Uh, you know, sometimes there's cases like the Naomi case that, uh, you know, kind of takes over for a little bit while, you know, the, it's active. But as soon as they find her uh, or an arrest is made, you know, we'll cover that and then we'll cover tons of other stuff until there's an update. We won't just keep talking about it. Unless there's stuff, you know, breaking news that fills in gaps, something like that. Yeah, there wasn't another body, though. It was just a head. Oh, boy. That's why you got to watch the show. It's yeah, it was crazy, wasn't it? All right. Uh... So thank you to uh, Teresa Ann, Teresa Ann, Tamara, not today, but Tamara. Uh, sarcastic Siren, quietly frozen, who wants to pass it forward. Sherlock Hemlock, Sandra Turner, cat eye donation. Janet Drums, oh, and there was Teresa Ann was a cat eye donation. Uh, Candlee Woodward Stone, Cami Curry, Tracy, Billy Juliana, Tamara, Lee D, Melissa23, Janet Lewis, LM, Mag, Carolina Girl, Shazzy D, Patty Barnett, Tamara, Plato, uh, Billy Juliana, Zozo, Tracy, Kathy Frydenmaker. And Tracy said, should Grace stay or should he go? <laughs> Sleuth Sandals, Sack and Fox Nanny, Keeping it real, 80s baby, Kathy Frydenmaker, and Nikki124. So we got it, we made it into the everything mug category. Not the tumbler. Alright, we've got uh, PayPal, we have Cheyenne, uh, Cheyenne R. Thank you very much. And then Simplify. Delva Johnson, and then uh, Stephanie Smith. She said, "Thank you for your hard work," and then said, "I was mean." <laughs> I don't know what that meant. Uh, Maureen Co. Or she was mad at me, not me. Uh, Trace uh, T T J O Tracy, and then L M. Right at the end there. All right. So you guys ready for the uh, the spins? Or the spin? Although it might be time to do a uh, like a mod a mod uh, what do I giving a mod? Mod tumblers or is it just I don't even remember what that one. Maybe we'll do yeah, I don't know. What's, well, how about Wednesday we'll do a uh, mod tumbler. All right. Alright, so we're going to do the wheel of names. Whoa, jeez, what the heck was that? There it is. There it is. Okay, we're going to shuffle.
Yeah! Hey, <laughs> okay, the first person that types in one, that's what I'm going to spin right then. Type in a one. Janet Drone! <laughs> there we go, Janet Drums. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool, very cool. So send me your address and I'll send you the everything mug. All right, so thank you guys for being here tonight and supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, it was uh, for me in my brain. It was it was crazy in here tonight. <laughs> it wasn't too bad though. It was just like so much sort of just nonsense, nonsensical. You know, I wonder if he if he wears moccasins on his days off. That guy. You know? Have you thought of that, Gray? No, I haven't. I have not thought if the suspect was wearing moccasins on his days off. I can honestly say that as a fact. All right. Well, thank you guys very much. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. And as I always say, everybody, until next time. Be safe out there. <laughs> and a two and a three and a... Yeah, I've been doing this true crime thing for quite a while now. Gosh, Grant, Grant. This whole time, I have not seen one person that is a... Crime dissector. Like rejecter. I'm well, a certified human. I'm a I'm a stretcher. If you try and play me like an old projector. I'll do the stuff. My neck double fuzzy gray is gonna give another lecture Crime collector Freak out of the head 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 Full of fracker, interceptor And I mean I wanna spike out of a vector Oh, he's spiked out, we have no respect, yo Hey, what are you guys doing? I'm sleeping! That's why we were doing it I'm the pretender And I'll serve it to you without the blender And in the end, I'm gonna send ya on a mission to reveal the true offender. Oh, well, you have a buddy. Yeah, so I'll just get right back. Mm -hmm. Wow, that was a happy G. You were just sleeping, you know? Well, I just woke up, Greg. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, you're so mean, Mary Lou. No, I'm not, Greg. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. All right, you guys. We'll see you guys tomorrow. And as I always say... Until next time, be safe out there. Be safe out there. <laughs> oh, you just practicing? Yeah, great. Wow. Wow. <laughs> See you guys later. <laughs>